What's up, guys? It's your boy, Stevie G, coming back at you with another episode of the Seamless Garage Podcast. And if you don't know what this podcast is about, you're new to the podcast, you're new to the Seamless Garage, Entourage, you know what I'm saying? It's about automotive. It's about mechanics. It's about building cars. It's about the car culture, car community, whatever you want to call it. Anything encompassing automotive whether it's your passion, whether it's your career, whether it's um, a hobby, anything to do with automobiles, we pretty much cover it. I'm a master mechanic myself. I've been with Nissan as a master mechanic for 10 years now. Um, I've worked on cars my whole life, always turned wrenches um, ever since I could hold a wrench, probably when I was five, right? Um, And, uh, it's all about cars for us, man. So I've got advice on that. I give out advice on being a mechanic, uh, technician tips, how to diagnose, all that good stuff, uh, where to go, how to start, all that good stuff. And then um, we have our own shop, what we call the Seamless Compound, the Seamless Garage, if you will, where uh, we build our own hot rods. We take the, lot, the things that I learned, I've taught them to my best friend DJ, and we've applied them on building our cars. You know, he's got an OBS Chevy. I'm building a DSM or Eagle Talon. Also, uh, kind of like a Mitsubishi Eclipse, if you don't know what that is. Uh, so we're into performance and modifying cars as well. That's really our passion, okay? So anyway, it's all encompassing cars. So if you're into that thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. If you're on a podcast platform, make sure you hit the follow button so you get every single one we drop. Um... And then, again, if you're on YouTube, like the video, make sure you comment down below what you think about this topic that we're about to come up with, all right, what we're about to come on here with. Um, But without further ado, let's hop into the episode. This one is going to be a banger, and I think you should stick around. All right, guys, if you know me, you know that I've always been success-driven. I've always been super focused on anything I want to do in life, right? I've always been, if I'm going to do it, I want to win, like, I, or I want to be the best, whatever it is. Maybe it's not winning. Maybe there isn't a win, but maybe there's the best, right? Um, and it's not a superficial thing. It's not a... It's nothing exterior. I don't really care what anybody thinks. It's not that at all. It's it's nothing exterior at all. It's all from driven from inside me. You know, I was taught at a young age that uh, you put pride in what you do or you don't do it at all. That's why I have that saying that I say where, you know, I've got two modes. It's either full throttle or I'm dead asleep because I'm either going to do it my best or I'm not going to touch it. Um even my wife can attest to this. It goes back to even playing. It even goes back to playing Jenga or any any little game or just something I've never even touched before. If it's a, it's a game we're playing with a bunch of friends and stuff, I want to be the best. I want to win. The first time I try, I want to win. And we know that that's not possible, right? We know that it's not always possible. But I'm going to try, and it's going to be a full all out effort when I do it. And that's how I approach everything. It's how I approach everything. Um, but the little story I'm going to tell you today kind of adds on to that and was a different catalyst. It was an exterior catalyst that I internalized and made it a part of me. Now, I always say external motivation is not the thing, right? It's not, it's try to stay away from external motivation because what if that person or that thing lets you down or you change your idea on on how you look at that or it just goes away or you don't even care about that topic anymore or that problem right it's going to let you down eventually and then you're going to be without motivation that's why you've got to find your purpose your purpose will always keep you up at night keep you going keep you grinding keep you moving towards your purpose obviously right and and what you've got to do that is the real motivation. Out of everything else, that is what I've noticed for me and for a lot of others. I've done a lot of studying on success. I've got books after books after books. I research stuff all the time. I'm always reading uh, Guru's books on everything else, right? So that's what I've noticed is everybody's aligned with their purpose. That, those are the ones that are successful, okay? So with all that being said, this story is about an external motivation um, that I, like I said, I internalized and I just kept it in the back of my head. Okay. 
not everybody's going to get motivated like this. And yes, it is automotive related. So stick around if you think this, if you're like, oh, he's going into that self-help stuff again. Um, this is for everybody to use. And uh, this is a mechanic story. So I want to tell you about it on how I got motivated um, that really took me to the next level. Because like I said, I'm always motivated and want to be the best anyway. But this like just took me over the edge. And uh, it really changed the tra trajectory of my career, I think. And I still hold on to it to this day. Don't hate the guy at all, but I still use it as motivation to this day. So let's, let's talk about that. So if you don't know my story, my background, go check out the first episode of the podcast. It's only on the podcast platforms. It's not on YouTube, unfortunately, because uh, it was one of the first ones we ever did, obviously, right? Go check it out. You can find out my story on how I got started and everything, okay? But um, when, I just, when I finally got into Nissan, right, I think I was 21 when I finally got into Nissan. Um, now, I came in with six Nissan certs and everything, went through UTI, all that stuff. Again, just go check out my story. That way you can get the whole lowdown on how I got started. But there was a guy, I'm not going to name him because I don't want to name drop and stuff like that. Um, and I appreciate him this, today. I, I thank him for doing that um, because it just it drove me. But, but at the time, it was a, at the time he became a villain, right? But right now, you know, it's kind of like, well, thank you, man, because you really drove me. You know, you gave me that drive just exteriorly, just from something you said. So anyway, 21, hopped in there, hopped into Nissan. And um, it was the, I think he was the shop foreman at the time. I can't remember, but I think he was the foreman at the time. And um, and, he, and anyway, it was a random guy. It was a guy, right? And he was like, hey, uh, you're new, right? Yeah, you're a new technician. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm new. Uh Yep, just got here, whatever, and he's like, oh, okay, what's your background, what's your experience? And I told him, you know, I grew up turning wrenches, but uh, just got out of UTI um, a year prior, uh, and had went through the whole Nissan courses there at UTI that they offer, so I already came in with six Nissan certs right off the rip, which is great, man. Uh, UTI helped me out on that one, you know, I had to pay for it, obviously, but I'm saying, them having that really gave me a leg up on some things. Um, really helped me get my foot in the door. For sure, for sure, man. Um, everything they taught me helped me get my foot in the door. It's just some people didn't apply it. But we're going to talk about that on another episode. I'm going to bring that up. Um, I was like, I went to UTI and everything. He was like, oh. He was like, oh, okay. He's like, you know, back in my day, uh, you didn't have to go to UTI. You didn't have to go to school. Uh, to be taught how to be a mechanic, you're either a mechanic or you're not, right? And he was like, and he, and this is the last thing he said. This is really what stuck with me, right? He was like, uh, he was like, from my experience, people who go to tech school don't make it; they don't end up being good mechanics. And I literally, like back then, like nowadays, I'd have probably not said anything back. Okay, back then, I was a mouthy dude. If you knew me back then, you're probably laughing right now because you know what I'm fixing to say to this guy. I was like, oh yeah? I was like, well, I ain't one of them guys. And you're going to find out. And uh, and I said it in a pretty aggressive tone. Like, I didn't care. I said, you're going to find out. And uh, I put that on my chest from, from, from that day forward. Still to this day, like I'm getting goosebumps right now talking about it. From that day forward, I put it on my chest. Okay. And like, I, and I just, you know what I mean? It may not be a healthy thing for everybody to do. If you're not mentally strong, it may not be a healthy thing for you to do. But for me, I put it in the back of my head. Boom. Okay. All right, dude. So nobody thinks I can make it. Like, that's just immediately what I translated it to. Nobody thinks I can make it because I went to UTI and I'm not a real mechanic. So from that day forward, it was like, all right, bro. I'm going to show you what a mechanic does. I'm going to show you. Because uh, everybody thought he was really the smartest guy, which he was. Very smart. Learned a lot from him along the way, by the way. But that right there, I was like, Boom. All right, thank you, because now we're going to kill it. And now I'm going to do everything I can, every single action I take, to prove to you that you were wrong. And that you don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not one of those guys. I'm not one of those guys that just, oh, I have nothing else to do, so I'm going to hop in school. Now, I'm a mechanic, and that's what I do, and I put that on my chest. And I've worked on cars since I was a little kid, and I learned everything from my grandfather and my brother's dad, and I've applied it. And I took UTI seriously. I took the Nissan courses seriously. I took my career seriously. And for this guy to say that, it was an attack. It was like, okay, 
So the cards are stacked against me then, bro. Okay, I see you. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to say, and um, boom. After that, I probably proved the guy wrong way early, right? Like, I probably proved the guy way wrong way early. He was like, man, I got it wrong. Oh, boy, did he get it wrong. I made him pay. And not pay in any other way than just mentally. He was like, you know what? I, I, I was wrong. You know what I mean? The dude's the type of guy that would never apologize or anything like that. And I didn't want him to apologize. No, thank you. Thank you for the steam. Thank you for putting that on me to where I just want to kill it. Because he, was, he didn't realize who he was talking to. He didn't know who he was talking to. Again, if you know me, don't say something like that to me. If you, if, if you, uh, don't say anything like that to me if you don't want me to go full bore on it because I will. Don't ever come up, like if we're doing something, I don't care if it's flag football. I don't care what it is, man. I don't care if it's racing to the top of the escalator. Don't ever tell me that I can't because then that's over. It's it for you. You're going to lose, dude. I will find a way for you to lose. I will find a way. Like, You know what I mean? Like, And that's what I'm saying. The only reason I tell this story is because I want you to realize that uh, you got to have drive, man. Like, in order to do anything in life, and if it's a mechanic, I hope it's mechanics here listening to me, you got to go. You got to go, man. You know, getting from Express to Beeline or getting to used cars or, you know, finally getting to Main Shop, you know, whatever it took for you to get there, you've got to realize that it's important that you keep pressing forward. Whenever you decide, uh, oh man, I've made it to technician, so I'm just gonna, I'm chilling. I'm where I'm, I'm where I want to be, and I'm just chilling. No, nah, man, dude, you've got specialist after that. You've got senior specialist after that. You've got master tech after that. You've got foreman after that. Like you've got goals. You know what I mean? You've got things that you've got to press forward towards. You don't just give up afterwards, man. You gotta keep going, and so you've got to find that purpose. Okay, you got to find that reason. This was just an accelerator. The story I'm telling you was just something that put put it on the gas, man. Gas pedal all the way. Like, it just pushed me. I was already wanting to be the baddest dude in the shop, being the baddest dude around when it comes to cars, knowing my stuff, not just talk, actually researching every night, every day, putting your, putting your effort in, man. People talk about it a lot, but then they don't take action. You got to put that effort in. What is that you're going after? You know what I mean? And what's it going to take? That's what people don't... People have got a goal in mind, but then they don't remember what it takes. You've got to take steps every day towards that goal, and what does it take, okay? So, that little story I'm telling you, man, that's just a little accelerator, just a little chip. Some people, it will work for, man. You get a little chip on your shoulder, and boom. It still pushes me to this day, okay? It still pushes me to this day. Um, I am a shop foreman now for a Nissan dealership, and one thing about that is, I'm a young buck in that position. I'm young. I'm very young for that position. But the thing is, I'm the perfect guy for the position. I understand that. I know that. And I know what I'm capable of. And I know what I can do for the dealership and for the shop. And I know where I can take these guys. I know all of that. Okay. That being said aside, there's still people that think you've got to be really old. You know, the position has become weird. It's you, it's become to where it's a guy that's you know that can't turn wrenches anymore. You know his hands are messed up, his shoulders are messed up, whatever, and he can't turn wrenches anymore. So they put him in there because his brains are still there, right? And so he can help and guide everybody. But they end up not being the the best for the position because they've already been washed up and they're already a lot of them are already jaded to the to the to the um, to the field. They're already jaded to the actual career itself. You know what I mean? And so they're the wrong guys for the job. Um, I'm not always saying that that's the case. It's, I'm, I'm saying I'm not saying that's always the case. But what I'm saying is, so everybody's got it. Hey, you got to be older because you got to know some stuff. You got to be really old to know some stuff. Yes, experience comes with time. But I accelerated that experience by doing everything I could to understand all systems. And um, I never get burnt twice. I never get burnt twice. If I mess up on something, I learn it, and, and, and after that, it doesn't happen again. I don't get burnt twice. I learn from my mistakes. So I learn at an accelerated pace. I always have because I've always had that drive to be that guy that's got the answer. You know what I mean? It's got the answer. That's got you know what I mean. And and so what I'm saying is, me being young in that position, there's guys that uh you know like inherently there's always got well you know there's always gonna be older guys in the shop anyway. 
And I don't really get that much pushback in my shop, but I had already expected it, right? Like, it was already in the back of my mind, that, like, hey, I'm young, I'm going to get some pushback. Like, I'm going to get some, hey, you don't know what you're talking about, kid, you haven't been in the field long enough or whatever. I've been working on cars longer than you've been alive. I've got that before. Um, and I was still able to teach those guys something, right? And I'm not, I'm not trying to be ego crazy. I'm not trying to be braggadocious. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm simply trying to say is the effort that I put in accelerated me to where I am today. And I'm very thankful for the guy that gave me that chip on my shoulder, okay? Because I was, like I said, I was already going to kill it, but he just added on to it. He just added on to it. That was it. And uh, from then on, I just put the whole technician, um, the whole technician and mechanic uh, at UTI or wherever you went to tech school. I put that whole community on my back, and I was like, I'm going to prove him different. I'm going to show him that dudes can come out of school and know what they talk about and just get after it. I didn't just ha now look. There's no nothing wrong with what I'm about to say. There's nothing wrong if you're this person, but I didn't just hop into. I just didn't get into cars when I was in high school and was like, you know what? I want to turn this into a career or I want to see what it do. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not that guy. Again, if if you know me at all, you know I've been turning wrenches since I was a little kid. I was helping I was helping my friends fix their bicycles. You know what I mean? Like when I was a little kid. Like that's what I did. Uh, as everybody came to my shop, uh, in my grandfather's shop, and we fixed their bikes and stuff. Four wheelers, dirt bikes, everything. Everything you can think of, I was turning wrenches on. Okay, so I had this embodied in me a long time ago. Like, that was my thing, okay? Um, so there's no shame in you if you're in high school right now or if you're not out of high school and you decide you want to get in this field. There's no shame in that. But what I'm saying is some of these guys uh, are really fresh, right? And so they go to school and stuff. And if you're that, let me give you some advice. If you're that guy, right, that's, that's kind of fairly new to it, but it's a pat like all of a sudden it struck you and you're like, you know what, I love cars. I, I'm fascinated by how they work, because I am too. Fascinated by how they work, and I want to know how they work. And I want to make a career out of this. I want to do this for my life. I want to do this for the rest of my life. So let me give you some advice. If you're new to it, if, if you're older and you're getting into this, that's totally fine. What you need to understand is it's not the learning part that's going to get you. You know, going to school, perfect. That's going to be the best, that's going to be ideal for you. I wouldn't hop into Express and stuff like that, hop into these dealerships and then try to work your way up. You can. You totally can. And there's a bunch of people that do it. I've got a success story. I'm trying to get him on the podcast one day. I've got a success story where that was the, the case. I've got – there's hundreds and thousands of people I know that didn't go to tech school. But what I'm saying is if you're the older guy, what I mean by older is like 18 plus or like maybe just in high school you just got into it. You can learn everything you can learn, Okay. YouTube's got it. Heck, if you don't want to go to school, YouTube's got it. But you're gonna to have to get the knowledge, right? You're gonna to have to learn the systems. Like that's just that's just the facts. You gotta learn the systems, you gotta learn how this stuff works. Learning and memorizing that is fine. It's gonna be the applying it because of the lack of experience, because you're just now getting into it. And it's gonna be you the using of the tools and stuff like that. And maybe even the terminology. Those are the things that are gonna get you. The terminology, the tools and uh the experience those three are going to be what gets you okay if you're the if you're the guy that's getting into the field a little late all right and i say field because i'm just saying anybody who's turning wrenches i'm not saying just dealerships i'm not saying independent shops i'm saying speed shops uh uh perform you know performance speed shops uh stuff like that stuff that's like really cool too right like some people like those things. That's still a career to me. That's still a passion. That is still part of the field, okay? Um, but again, for you guys that are that are newer to it, those are going to be your things. Learn how to use your, like, this is what I saw from people. That's what I've seen from people coming in, okay? Is that it, like, wrenches just looked weird in their hands. They didn't know how to use their tools very well. Get very familiar with your tools, okay? Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take experience. Just, but get very familiar with your tools. Experience is, again, going to come with time. It's going to come with time, so it's going to take a little bit for you to get uh, get everything down, understand stuff, and get confidence. Once you get confidence in this field, it skyrockets and takes you off. Okay. And the third thing, 
was the terminology, right? Again, going to take time. Now, you can research some of this stuff, but as memory goes, it's like memory in a spelling bee, right? You're going to remember those words then, and then you're going to perform on them. You're going to forget all about it, right? So what you need to do is just get used to using them, get used to hearing them. And again, use YouTube, man. Use this channel. Use this YouTube channel. There's a lot on here you can learn. There's a lot of content already. I'm putting out three videos a week. Um, so we're racking up the content there is plenty for you to learn. Um, and if there's something I haven't... You come back to this video. If there's something I haven't taught yet, because there is plenty, comment below. Give me some ideas on some stuff I need to bring up that's like a hot topic you guys want to know right now. Okay? Let me know, because I will teach you. I will show you. And if I don't know, we'll learn together. I'll show you how I found out, and we'll explore it together. I'm, I'm humble enough to know that I don't know everything. Okay? And that's another thing you need to do. But I just want, I was fired up and I just wanted to give you guys the experience that I got. Wanted to tell y'all a little bit about my story and about what, you know, little things like that, man, you can use them. It's certain people though, not, like I said, people will get brought down on that. Like it, just as quickly as I took off and was like, you know what, I'm going to show you dog. I'm going to show you what's up. The next guy would have been like, man, maybe he's right, man. And then it, he gets put in his place, right? Like somebody... Man, I really put him in his place, right? And so now he's just kind of like, man, maybe this isn't for me. And so it's always in the back of his head. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're that person, get that out of your mind. Get that out of your brain right now. You, you're here for a reason. You want to do it? Get after it. Don't listen to what anybody says. He is not right. I don't care. I don't care if he was right, bro. Prove him wrong. Prove him wrong real quick and, and let's move on with life. Like, you just got to get going, you know what I'm saying? You got to find a way to get you going, all right? Um, I think this, uh, the spirit behind this just really comes from, I'm just seeing a, lot, a, lack of, uh, a lack of passion and a lack of courage in the community right now, man. People are just kind of being timid about it. They're either being timid or they're lackadaisical. Like, they just, they're just chill. They're just chill where they're at and um, they're lacking ambition. Um, and that drive is what keeps you alive, man. If you're not growing, you're dying. I can hit you with all kinds of quotes, you know what I mean? But if you're not growing, you're dying. If you, you know, the drive is what keeps you alive, right? So make sure that uh, you're doing everything you can to progress. There's always something for you to learn. And uh, the thing for me is learning is what, what drives me and gets me going. So um, learning about the new systems and just going further. If you're one of those guys that um, feels like you know a lot and you've really gotten to the crescendo or you're really close, uh, I would implore you, even if you're in the dealership, I would implore you to look into performance stuff because it's going to kind of test your brain and stretch your brain a little bit. But guess what? It furthers your understanding of what's going on in these cars. Yes, we don't mess with tunes whatsoever in the dealership, right? Like we don't we don't mess with anything when it comes to the maps, you know, fuel maps, ignition table, you know, none of that. We don't mess with any of that, right? We can adjust parameters, set numbers, but that's it, right? Well, taking that next level, you'll really be able to understand the systems. With that knowledge, you can really use it. It'll help, and you can apply it towards uh, your current diagnosing, um, and you can understand what the computer's trying to think because that's really what... Uh, tuning is right is changing the way the computer thinks or changing the way the computer adjusts its parameters to the sensors that it's seen um so anyway if you're one of those guys that's really high up you're a master tech or whatever and you're like man i've done all the learning i can do now that may be true man you may be a killer but if you haven't delved into performance go ahead man i'm telling you just just go learn a little bit about um you know ignition uh timing on the tables and stuff like that fuel maps all that good stuff um, will help you better understand what that ECM is trying to do and what the engine's trying to do, um, and it will help with diagnosing. Um, if you haven't gotten into Pico stuff, Pico scope stuff, get into that. That's a next level for a lot of people uh, that don't really have to deal with it in the dealership world anymore because diagnostics have really gotten to where it's just it's just kind of like plug and play type of deal, right? Where um, the the most interesting diagnosis you're going to get into is like electrical diag with like wiring and stuff okay you get in that pico scope man it will help your diagnostic tremendously because then you can check timing and stuff we're not guessing anymore there's a lot you can do with pico scope without getting too far into it in this video 
and get and muddy enough the point of this video. Uh, I just encourage you to continue to learn. There is always something for you to learn, and always something to push forward on. But anyway, get out there, guys. If you want to get in the field, get in it. If you haven't already, if you're not, if you are in the field, let's kill it, man. Let's get after it. Let's show these guys what's up, man. Because let me tell you right now, there's nothing like it, man. Like there's nothing like a man that can get stuff done. And if you're a woman, I'm talking to you. Like if you if you're in this field, like you can get it done. You know what I mean? Uh, but there's nothing like the fact that it's like, man, I can I can do this. Like I I can work on cars. I can get them fixed up. It's needed, you know, in a world right now where everybody's trying to go very entrepreneurial and very work from home type of stuff. And that's OK. That's a great way to make money. There is still a need for people like us that want to get our hands dirty and really want to understand a craft and kill it in it. So if you're that person, let's get it. Let's kill it together. So like I said before, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment below what you thought about this topic. Did you have a chip on your shoulder? How did you get into the field? Also comment below what else do you want to see? Is there something specifically that you want to see? Uh, ask me anything and we'll make a topic on it. We'll make a video on the topic, I mean. So without, uh, you know, with that being said, we'll see you guys on the next video. It's been your boy Stevie G and I'm out.